I call the honourable member, Tim McIndoe. Um, I'd like to thank Mr Chevelle for his acknowledgement of our new Minister of Justice and the very demanding role that she has assumed and the huge workload that she has inherited, and I too wish her well in that. And this, of course, is one of those very important measures that she is now charged with progressing through the House. I'd also like to begin by acknowledging the work of my predecessor, the Honourable Chester Burroughs, as Chairman of the Justice and Electoral Committee in the last Parliament, and those members who sat with him on that committee, because they were very, very busy, particularly in the light of the Hamid decision late last year, immediately before the election. I wasn't a member of the committee at that stage, so I acknowledge the work that others did on it as they heard the submissions and contributed to the deliberations, and I agree that they have produced an important and better measure as a result of that work. Both the Minister and Mr Chevelle have mentioned the Supreme Court decision in R. N. Hamid and others, which called into question the lawfulness of a number of the situations in which covert video surveillance is currently used. And this is an issue clearly of significant public interest. We need to get it right. The Supreme Court stated that standard search warrants could not be relied upon as a lawful authority to conduct covert video surveillance and that this needed to be regulated by a proper regime. So this is provided for in the bill in the surveillance device regime. To prevent a number of ongoing criminal investigations that used surveillance from being jeopardised at that time, the government enacted the Video Camera Surveillance Temporary Measures Act 2011, which was the measure that Mr Chevelle was speaking about a few moments ago, which for six months until the middle of next month suspended the effect of the harm to judgment. But we are now not far away from the expiry of that particular piece of legislation. So this search and surveillance bill seeks to strike a balance between the need for effective law enforcement tools and protection of the rights of citizens as set out in the Bill of Rights Act. The existing police powers, Mr Speaker, are more than 50 years old, and it's very important for the House to take that fact into account. This is an area where there are have been very significant technological developments. In fact, the technology available to us now is such that even our parents wouldn't recognise, certainly not our grandparents 50 years ago. And the law during the intervening five decades has developed in a very piecemeal fashion as it's attempted to respond to those developments. That's why, Mr Speaker, the Law Commission concluded in its 2007 report that search and surveillance powers should be consolidated and updated, and in particular, the Commission called for a bill to bring order, certainty, clarity and consistency to the sprawling mass of statutory powers of search and surveillance which were scattered or are scattered throughout the statute book. The Law Commission also identified a need to address the glaring gaps where the law has failed to keep pace with the changes in modern society. So it's important to understand what the bill's surveillance regime actually covers. Interception devices that can intercept communications, also known as audio surveillance. Tracking devices that can detect where a thing is located or whether a thing has been opened or tampered with. And visual surveillance. Only a judge may issue a surveillance device warrant if he or she is satisfied that the conditions are met. The degree of intrusiveness of surveillance will depend on the circumstances. So, for example, video surveillance will not always be more intrusive than searching a house under a warrant. However, there are significant privacy concerns with regard to visual surveillance, including trespass and audio surveillance, so these methods should be limited to serious offending. There's no doubt that audio and visual surveillance are important tools for investigating crimes. However, because they are also recognised as involving significant privacy concerns, there are a number of safeguards necessary for their use. Visual trespass surveillance and interception devices are only available to investigate offences punishable by seven years or more of imprisonment, or for certain firearms offences. The only agency that will be able to undertake visual trespass surveillance and interception will be the police at first. Customs and the Department of Internal Affairs may be allowed to conduct trespass surveillance in future once they've been properly trained in their use and authorised under the bill. So, Mr Speaker, it's my view that New Zealanders understand the need for this consolidation and updating of our search and surveillance legislation 
and that they will agree and be reassured by the safeguards contained within it. It's an important measure and I acknowledge the work of the Minister, her officials and those members who have brought it to this point. I call the Honourable 